Was this a test of our faith? And what that means is feel what we're feeling because God has made a way. But believers must be reminded that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You may not see it. You may not feel it as yet. Because you feel discriminated against on the job or otherwise. But I'm here to tell you, God is able. God is still able. God is still doing great things. God has told you once today, and he has told you many times, well, he has told you once, and then he told you again. And in the message, God is going to tell you that he will do great things and is doing great things. Though you don't understand, you're crying out, God, God, God. But you're not seeing it, but believe in it. The topic for today is an amazing touch in desperate times. An amazing touch in desperate times. I told you that God tell you several times and he's going to tell you again that he is the amazing God who does great things in a made in a made great things in desperate times but you must touch him you must touch him you know there's a difference in a relationship where people just talk just just talk for, for some time, some time back, my wife and I came to the conclusion that we are too busy to even talk to each other. And she complained, because I don't complain. And she said, we don't even touch each other again. We, so, we are so busy that we didn't, we don't have time to touch each other. Let me ask you, do you have time to touch each other in your relationship? Sometimes you are busy. You, um, you, you just smile if it's the truth. We don't have the time to touch each other. Jesus and I'm leading you to looking at the desperation. Desperation. The feeling of desperation. The first point. The feeling of desperation. Jesus was on his way letting people know the purpose of and, and plan for his coming to earth. Jesus was here, going around, telling people who he was and what was his plan and purpose on earth. He used parables to shorten his message. He was not a God who believes in verbal communication, but believe more in nonverbal communication, less words. His intention was to convey his love and power to restore people back to life. People who had lost communication and regard with God. And so, 
his purpose was to bring them back into the relationship with God. You see, it is, it is, it is depressing. It's depressing when you are not in communication with your friends or relatives. But worse, when you are not in communication with God, you are feeling depressed. So Jesus came to reestablish the union and communication to bring man out of depression into a great impression of yourselves and God. Christ admonishes his disciples to go and preach the gospel by showing good works rather than by using comforting and colorful words to entice people, to let them feel good. There comes a time when you must feel bad because things are bad. You can feel good when things are feeling good. You're not saying that you are depressed because things are really bad. Because sometimes we don't know. But we call the bad good. And we call the bad bad. But there is goodness even in what you think is bad. There can be. So Jesus came to inspire and revive man on earth. As he came and lifts man out of the depressing situation that they were in. Jesus says, use works and not words. Works and not words. As the tool for lifting people into a great feeling of joy in the midst of sadness. Jesus says, works Works were used to express your heart. But works are more effective as you express what you do, what you are, by what you do. For 12 years, this ailing woman, and you can find it in the passage that was read, St. Mark chapter, chapter 5. St. Mark chapter 5. For 12 years, this ailing woman suffered. If you think you are having a, a foot ache and you are suffering, but here is a woman who suffered physically, psychologically, socially, and in all ways she suffered for over 12 years. She felt embarrassed around her friends and relatives who knew her condition. She was the victim of an unusual blood vessel. It was bad. And the fact is this, she exhausted her money on all available doctors, but to no avail. Other medical personnel may have tried to help her, but still, she was not better, but rather, she was getting worse. If she were a member of Christ's way, or even acquainted with the people of Christ's way, she would not, she would no doubt be flooded with help from the web group. Because when you are depressed, you can fall back on your web group, the ones closest to you. Whether everybody sees you or not, 
But if you have a web group, you belong to a web group. You belong to a, a group of people who are close to you. If you're absent or present, they know and they can relate to you. So this woman will have had further help if she were belonging to a web group at Christ's way. The groups assist to provide care for one another on behalf of the church. This woman had problems, desperate problems. Read 1 John 3 and verse 18. 1 John 3 and verse 18. The Bible said, let's read. My little children, let's not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. So this woman's suffering would be bad, but she would feel at ease if she had a sense of, as I said, the web group, because the web group is driven, not only the web group, but all Christian groups ought to be driven by love, care, and concern. You know, God sometimes allow our condition to feel or get worse. God allows our condition to feel or get worse at times. To draw our attention to human limitations. You see, sometimes we think that we know and we have it all. But so sometimes God has to draw the reins to remind you that you are you. You are only you, despite who you think you are. At times, to draw your attention to the vastness of his power. God says you are powerful, but let me put on some earthquake and mystify you and remind you that I am present. This act of Christ opens our minds to the truth of man's abilities and focuses you and others to acknowledge God as the chief doctor, chief king, the chief leader, the chief one who has power to do great things in this world. God has to draw our reins to remind you of who you are. Because sometimes we, like my mother would say, you, you, you pass your place. And we sometimes pass our places, especially in this age of technology. You can pass your place because you think you know so much techno technology and you don't know how to be technique. God is God. God is still doing great things. He can change your minds. He can change your thoughts. He can change your action. He does things to let you be aware that I am here and I am God. It's not to discourage you, but to encourage you. The woman was in great sympathetic situation. Terrible. But faith can be born in grave desperation. Let me repeat. Your faith can be born when you are really desperate for help. Because sometimes when you have it, you don't even know that you still don't have it. It depends on the what it is. It depends on what the it is. You think because you have it, you have it. But sometimes you don't know that you have it, but you don't have the real thing. 
what I'm saying is human limitation, human strength, human power, and human technology doesn't mean that he is doing the will of God. It doesn't mean that he's happy. This woman was not happy. She was in a grave situation. Perhaps you need, perhaps, if you're in this condition, if you're feeling not too satisfied, or you don't even know you are not satisfied, you need a fresh touch of Jesus Christ with implications that you are going to feel better and be better in the future. You not, may not feel right now. What I'm saying is you really need what you think you need, you don't need. When you are heartbroken, desperate, you think you need medical attention. But after you get your medical attention, you still need to be attended to. You may need a fresh touch of Jesus. Let me say, friends, the group who may require a new fresh touch of Jesus are the church people. You hear me, friends? Church people. You see, my friends, your Christianity can get stale. Your Christianity can ho have holes in it. But you are a member of the church, so you feel safe. It doesn't matter who you are. How great you are, powerful you are. Whether you're the pastor of Christ's way. Or tremendous member of Christ's way. Tremendous leader, administrator. Leader of ministries, you're great and you're doing it a long time. But you may need a fresh touch of Jesus. You see, my friends, you can feel it and sometimes you can't feel it. You know when you get accustomed to something, you take it for granted. So you can be leaving you can be living a half Christianity and think it's okay because of your, your status in the church. But the fact is this. Your half Christianity is not Christianity. You need to look at yourself. I need to look at myself. And I look at myself very often, very every day. Because I am conscious that I can think I, everything is okay. But it is not okay. Because the rightness must be with Jesus Christ. The only that is the principal attachment you need to have. Jesus. Are you okay with Jesus? Are you okay with the will of Jesus Christ? So perhaps you need a fresh touch. With, un, with implications. You see, you, see, you see, it depends on what your implications are. You need a fresh touch. It may be you think you need to, you need a new status in the church. You need a fresh touch of Jesus Christ to lift your spirit and to put you right in the act of faith that you require. And so Jesus and the woman are very important factors. You need to read. You need to grow a woman. Read and read. Read. You know, sometimes we, we read for read's sake. And sometimes you, you read to get yourself internally, internally changed by what is important to you. 
this will, this commitment, this touch will not hurt you. It will not hurt anyone. But it will enhance our reputation. A new, fresh touch of Jesus Christ can advance your reputation. Now you know what reputation is. Reputation is what people say about you, not what you say about yourself. And that's important. Christ was very, Jesus Christ asked, what do men say that I am? Have you ever asked that question of somebody? Have you ever asked your kids? Have you asked your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, girlfriend, grandmother, mother? What do you think of me? Some of us would not like the answer. That's why we don't ask it. Some of us take it for granted. It's going to be good. But my dear friends, if you really want to continue to live the Christian life, your reputation is significant. And the reputation is the expression of people's opinion about you. So, this woman was in desperation regarding her condition. How she felt and how she was. But the second point we want to make this morning, as I said before, Desperation can lead you to tremendous change in your life. What I'm saying is, don't feel too bad if you feel bad sometimes. Because your feeling could be a shake up of you. Because of your feeling all the time good and great and big and bossy. So you are shaken up. And that's not bad. Because Jesus Christ shakes up. Jesus shakes up the child of, of his. Because he needs to bring him out of where he is to what he needs to be and can be. That's why I'm saying it's not all. You think it's bad, but it's not all bad. Guess what? If you are experiencing what you think is bad, before you condemn yourself, say to yourself, where is Jesus in it? Where is Christ in it? For, for example, some of you are thinking, especially ladies are thinking, you know, you don't have anybody. I don't have anybody. Poor me. I don't have anybody. And now what am I going to be? And you think of your retirement and who am or uh, maybe you think that you have too much money, but you know what are you gonna do with it? <laughs> and you are praying until your knees start bruise off for a man. And you plan him what he's going to be and everything already. Because more many of us before we pray, we plan our prayer to exceed to get what we want. So in, in fact. Some of us are instructing Jesus, not requesting of him. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Would you like anybody to be your somebody? Would you like anybody to be your somebody? 
the reason you have who you have because you have anybody for somebody. Jesus put a, a, a plug in your tire and he stops the re relationship from growing to where you want it to be and not where he wants you to be. And so be careful how you consider bad, bad. Sometimes your bad is good. And so this woman, she was feeling bad. But my friends, determination empowers a state of depression. Determination can empower a state of depression and desperation. In other words, you're, you're sure, you're holding on. You're firm. You're determined to achieve a change. The woman was determined to achieve a change in her medical situation. She needed a change. I want to change. To overcome life's struggles. You know who I'm talking to now. I'm talking to you. Who are under life's struggles. To overcome life's struggles and challenges, some Christians pray and need to pray for a fresh touch of Jesus. I said it already, and I'm saying again. To overcome your situation, you need to pray because you tell yourself you are so Christian that you don't need to pray. But you need to pray for a fresh touch of Christ. This is what I mean. Most times, most people are praying for somebody else. Prayer is all somebody else. You go on long or short, you're praying for somebody else. Have you ever prayed for yourself in relation to what I'm talking about? Have you ever said to yourself, God, reveal myself to me because I may think I'm a Christian, but in fact, I am fooling the crowd. But I'm, I'm not a child of God. I have not done what I ought to do to be a child of God. That means I will not have the kind of faith that grows, grows, and that makes me change. It's faith that changes you. Faith in God changes you. And many so-called Christians are very nice, great, tremendous singers, talkers, or whatever, prayers, Tremendous. But you have not been changed. You don't change. You don't change your behavior. Your, ch your attitude does not change. Your mind does not change. Your thoughts about yourself does not change. The fact is this. You need to change. Not my mother, not my father, but me, oh God, stands in the need of prayer. I am talking about not non-Christian. I am talking about the Christians need to change. And so, we must not forget that to have a spiritual strength, you must service the process of restoration. I need to say that again. To have a spiritual change of my life, I must service my process of restoration. That means I must take a look at the manual to see whether I have been following the manual. Because, my friends, 
You can have a TV solar and it's a little problem which could be fixed if you know the manual. So you can be a child of God but if you don't know the manual you can be doing the wrong thing the right way. Christians need to, uh, to assess themselves. Christians need a reassessment of themselves to see whether how, how well they are doing on the course. That means service, your process of restoration means that you, you're accustomed to talking to somebody about how to. But do you know how to do it? Or do you forget? I, I believe that many of us Christians knew how to, but we forget. You forget to pray. You forget to talk to Jesus. You forget to let your, your, your walk becomes seen how you are walking. And you are doing it because you get so accustomed to talking to, but not talking about yourself. And so you must service it every now and then. Every now and then, instead of talking, instructing somebody, every now and then, you're instructing somebody out how to, how to, how to. You're tremendous in that. But take a look at it in relation to yourself. Because you may well be showing somebody that is right for him and her. But what is working with you is bad. In other words, then, you, I as a pastor, as a pastor, it's very easy for me to help you, counsel you and all that because that's my daily calling. But have I taken a look at my family? Have you taken a look at your family? Have you taken a look at your wife? Have you taken a look at your husband? Have you taken a look at your children? Are you doing well with them? You told me what to do, but you have not done it for yourself. Christians need to assess and reassess themselves. Active faith. With divine implications of living a victorious Christian life in, a, in, in an imperfect society. You need to assess and reassess your activities in, in regard to faith in the society which is not acting right. My friends, Jesus Christ anoints us to have active faith and to keep our eyes open in the society which is not working necessarily according to his will. You have more responsibility than you think you have. You see, my friends, you are taking it for granted that you are a church member so I'm all right. I'm fit for heaven. You only, if you're a church member, you're only fit for a nice funeral by CBC. But my friends, it takes more. It takes more. God's word says, the wages of sin is death. And when we die, it's not over. We have to face the judgment. So be active in your faith. Have an active faith. Jesus reminds us in this story how to restore your faith. That is, when you do your reassessment and you find that the remarks you get is 49 out of the 100. And you are shocked because you are a church member, a leader, and big this and big that. But you should have gotten about 50. It is 49 you have. But so then, 
No problem because once you are related to Jesus Christ, there's hope for you. And so Jesus reminds the woman, re Jesus reminds us that we need to assess our faith to make sure that we are 51%, we are not 49 Jesus reminds us in this short story how to restore your faith. Listen, I've called this the process of restoration. The process of restoration. This is what happened with the woman. And this is what ne needs to happen to you. This is what needs to happen to me. To maintain your standard with Christ. This is the first thing. The woman heard of Jesus. The first process, the first thing in the process of restoration is hearing. The woman heard of Jesus. Thank God this church listens. I am pleased about the fact that you listen to the word of God. You don't talk about yam and cocoa and banana, rice and peas and chicken during the sermon. If you're doing so, stop it. You only open your, your TV, whatever, when you are trying to text, retext somebody the message and so on. Not to look at monkey story. She heard of Jesus. Remember now, she is in a desperate situation. And so when you are desperate, your eyes and your ears kind of open a little more. So she heard of Jesus. When last have you heard of Jesus? She heard of Jesus. And then what, what did she do about the hearing? Remember now, watch her with a crowd. There's a crowd and she's there. She heard of Jesus. She heard before. She heard before. But she never calculates the thing according to her need. You see, she heard of Jesus when she didn't need him. But she needs something now. So she's going to listen more. Jesus don't care how, how it works. Just want to make himself available. So she heard of Jesus. Hearing doesn't do it entirely. The second thing, she believed. She heard, but secondly, she believed. I'm telling you, my friend, how to deal with restoration of your faith. Heard, believed. There's a difference between hearing and believing. You may have heard of Jesus. You may have heard of anything, but do you believe it? It needs to be applied to yourself in your condition. I hear, but do I believe? She heard of Jesus. She believed and right there is, if she were not a Christian, when she heard, and secondly, when she believed, it means that her faith was born at that time. When you believe, then you are spiritually born. That's what makes you become a child of God. You believe that if thou shalt believe with thy heart and confess with your mouth, then you will be saved. You know, many churches, in many churches, there are members all around. But because you're a member, it doesn't mean you have to be a Christian. 
You can be a member of this church without being a Christian. To be a member of this church, you can go through the steps of leading to baptism and reception. But to have faith in Jesus, to be a Christian, you have to go through the steps that lead you to confession of Jesus Christ as your Savior. I'm only saying this. I'm only telling you how to restore your faith. Because maybe you are going on as a nice member, but not Christian. The next thing, sees that the crowd so far, you heard and you believe. But the crowd is there. The crowd is there. The, thing, the fact is that she can't demonstrate what she believes because of a crowd. A very large crowd. So the thing is this. You must decide to how you're going to maneuver the crowd. Maneuver means huh? get around or whatever. Get around to, to know your, your tactics and so on. You have to maneuver the crowd. So for the woman to express what was in her heart, she has to deal with who were around. That means you have to watch your crowd. Watch your company. Watch who are you, who are, who are leading you, who watch your influence. The trouble today, the problem today, my friends, and I praise God. I shouldn't say, say it that way. I thank God that I finished rearing children. That's what I want to say. Because my children are still my children. It doesn't work today. The children stop being your children about age eight. They rule themselves. And you pray. Some of you, your biggest prayer when you go to bed is that Jesus Christ give me wisdom. Some, because many of you, you are here, but you don't know where your kids are. Not because you don't love them. But that is the time in which you are living. You have, sim you have my sympathy. You have my sympathy. And so, you have to deal with the crowd. So, the woman said, well, I heard, I believe. Now, the next thing is the crowd. Am I going to deal with the crowd? So she planned to get behind the crowd. She went behind the crowd. She succeeded to maneuver the crowd in that way. My friends, you have to be able to maneuver the times in which you are living. And it's hard. And that's where many of, that's, that's, that's the person who caused me burden this morning. Burden, burden, burden on my heart because you can't maneuver the situation of your children. You can't maneuver the crowd. The, 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 the crowd is too much, too thick, too strong, too influential. You can't deal with the crowd. But this woman got behind her and tried a thing. So she, ex she overcame the external obstruction to her faith. She resisted and overcame the disturbing distraction that many of your children are experiencing. The reason, reason is they, 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 ex they, they are experiencing extreme disturbance and distraction so they can't focus on God. They can't focus on their lesson. They can't focus on anything. Because when they're sitting here, the mind is all over the place. Mind is in China. 
because that's where, that's one of the places that have a lot of pretty women and men doing things that are not godly. And so in church, even in church, you see, turn on the, t- the, 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 what do you call the phone? And she looks at somebody, somebody and somebody's in China and India. She cannot concentrate on the church. It's, that's practical and realistic. It happens every Sunday. Somebody is distracted, not because they plan to, but the pressure of society is upon them and not, not, my God, it's rough. The next thing, she got behind the crowd and she stretched out her hand toward Jesus. Listen to me carefully now. She stretched out her hand toward Jesus. Remember, the intention is what? What's the intention? You're not following me, no friend. What's the intention of the woman? I'm, li- I'm listening for a word. Maybe I'm hearing it, but not hearing it. What was her intention? All right. Maybe you are saying it. What I'm hearing. The intention was to touch Jesus. Maybe you're saying that? Good. You get a hundred for that. You didn't say that, did you? You get 25. You have, a, you have a chance. You have a chance. The woman's intention was to touch Jesus. That's for her intention. That's her motive. She wanted to touch Jesus because she believed that he is the and was the only one who could do, create a change to her situation. She wants the touch. My friends, CBC, do you believe that Jesus Christ can make a difference to your situation if you touch him? The burden you have, the pressure you have, the desperation that you're in, do you believe that if you touch Jesus, it can make a difference in your life? That answer has to be yours. The verdict is yours. But my friends, you've got to touch him. You've got to reach, stretch your hands out. And stretch your hands out is like parting the crowd. And get to Jesus. My friends, until you get to Jesus, your problem will still be your problem. Because only Jesus can make a difference. Young people, it's only when you reach Jesus Christ that will make a difference to your life. It will empower you, strengthen you, anoint you, and open your brain. So that when you go to school, when you're teaching English, it's English you're in and not you're in China. So, she touched. But notice, my friends, she did not touch the Jesus, the physical Jesus. She did not. Because crowd, the crowd, the crowd. She already, mentally, she already dealt with the crowd. She said, get thee behind me, Satan. But she stretched and what she touched was his garment. It's very significant. 
And maybe you have never seen this fact. But when she reached out, he touched the garment. What was the meaning of this garment to Jesus? What was the meaning of the garment to Jesus? In the interest of time, let me say, the garment was the symbol of the presence of Jesus. The garment was the symbol of the presence of Jesus. Even Jesus, physical person, even Jesus had to wear something at that time. And that something represents Jesus. The garment was a representative of Christ. It was Christ, his presence. So he reached out and touched the garment. When he touched the garment, he touched Jesus. She, she touched Jesus. My friends, I've been saying it over and over again. Be careful. Because you're not so, so, so as a Christian. You're not mambi pambi as a Christian. Let me inform you that God's people are not trashy. God's people are kings and queens. And you who believe what you believe, God's people are different people. They don't look different. But they represent Jesus. Doesn't matter how old they are. Doesn't matter how young they are. You are God's representative. In other words, you are a symbol of Jesus. So when people reach out, they can touch you. And you represent Jesus. I have to hurry on because I see somebody look at them watch telling me to stop. But me not stopping until you understand me. You have to bear it. Bear it, my friend. Because I need to get it. I need for you to understand who you are. Understand who you are. You are God's representative. Let me finish the list. So when she reached out, she touched the presence of Jesus. And if you read verse 29 of the chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse 29, you see, it says, straightway the fountain of blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. If and when you touch Jesus, you will be free of your plague. The burden that's on you, you can reach the symbol of Jesus. The songs the hymns, the reading are all symbols. The Bible, you can, if you touch any one of the symbols of Jesus that represent Jesus, your life will be changed. And so, my friends, that is what we call the process of restoration. She heard. She believed. She stretched her hand. And some of you worrying about Jesus. Don't worry about Jesus. Worry about the symbol. That's all you're going to see now. Just, just, just respect the church. 
Respect God's people. Respect what you see around. Don't do what you should not be doing in the church. Because the church is God's representative. I don't care what other people believe. I'm just preaching the word of God as I believe it. And so when you do that, you can call yourself a child of God. I'm going to come, I'm coming down. She believed. A touch of Jesus would settle her desperation. And it did. Because when it took place, her situation changed. And she became not an ailing woman, but a child of God who get overcome her situation. What happened? He made a way. Her back was against the wall. And when she thinks that everything's going to fall, but he made a way. The same way he made for her, he can make a way for you. But you have to restore the principle. You have to, you have to do, you have to complete the principle of restoration as the woman did. My friends, I trust the grace of God will lead you. I trust that you would have opened your, your ears a little long enough to understand that your situation doesn't have to be a failing situation. Your situation can be an uplifting situation because while there is life, there is hope. God bless you.